Next, we're taking a look at sinking funds. Now, sinking funds might sound like an odd, strange concept if you um, hear it initially, but it's actually not that bad. Okay, and it's the idea of saving to replace expensive equipment or assets or just something that you won't necessarily have the all of the money at one time but you did have the object to begin with so let's say for example you inherited a car or you inherited some money and you bought yourself a brand new Audi that was five years ago or three years ago it doesn't matter but at some point you owned a new Audi and then you decided that in three years time so here it's me but then you decided that in three years time you want to three years later you want to buy the newest model on the market and to do so you are going to sell you're going to buy the newest model but to do that you're going to sell your old car now what is going to be the price of the new model in three years time will i be able to sell my old car and the same price i get for the old car buy the new car with if you are so lucky you are indeed very lucky no that will not happen if you sell the old car even though it's new now, in three years time, you're not going to get enough to buy the new car for two reasons. One is that this car's value will appreciate. In other words, due to inflation, which at this stage is about 6.7% in South Africa, due to inflation, you will be paying more for that car than if you buy it new today and due to depreciation in other words the reality that your car loses value you will not even get as much as your car initially was so the car's value will depreciate but at least this new price minus the old price so you are going to sell the old car and the money that you're going to get for the old car you can use to buy the new car so you don't need the whole amount for the new car you only need a little bit extra or maybe a lot depending okay but this answer this deficit is called the sinking fund when i take the price of a new one in a few years minus what i get for the old one that value is called the sinking fund and why is it called the sinking fund why why a fund because for the next three years i am going to save up using an annuity so that i can have enough in my sinking fund so that when I sell the old car and I add up my sinking fund I will have enough to buy the new car and I think this whole business will be best illustrated with an example let's say this car is currently worth 140,000 Rand and the appreciation rate is 6,7% and the depreciation rate is 19% and I can save at uh, well let's let's make it a nice saving 8% per annum compounded monthly and my question is if I want to buy a new car in three years time replace my current car with 140,000 in three years time and I save monthly starting in one month's time I save a monthly amount how much will I need to save every month so that I can have enough in my sinking fund
so that together with my sale of the old car, I can buy the new car. Well, let's see. How much will the new car cost? How much will the new car? So this is the method I work out there. First, the value of the new car. Then, how much I will get for my old car. And that will tell me how much must be the future value in my annuity. In other words, the sinking fund. So the new car is appreciating, therefore I use the appreciation formula. In other words, compound growth. Every year, it started at 140 as the initial value. Every year it grows with 6,7%, which is divided by 100 to the power of 4. Three years that is happening. So what do we get? Okay, let's take... 140 3 times in brackets 1 plus 6.7 divided by 100 close my bracket with an exponent of 3 it will be worth 170,000 and 67 and 40 one, six, 170 60 7 and 49, 67,49. What will I get if I sell my old car? Now remember my old car's value is decreasing, it's depreciating, so I'm using my depreciation formula. And I didn't say it, so we we're allowed to assume it. Cars will depreciate at reducing balance method, but most of the times they will tell us that. So the initial value of my car was 140,000. After one year, it will depreciate at 19%, not one year, at three years, 19%, let's see how much will I get back for my car, and 19% by the way is more or less the average that cars depreciate over three years, sometimes even up to 24%, so one minus 19 divided by 100, Close my brackets to the exponent of 3. And I can get back 74,401 rand and 74 cents. 74,401 rand and 14.74. 74 cents. In other words, this is what I'll need. This is what I'll get from my sale. So in the bank, after three years, I'll have to have saved up 170067,48 minus 74,401,74. Oh, that's 49, apologies. 49, I'm using my calculator, let's calculate it. Okay, one seven zero zero seven six point four nine minus one no, seven four four zero one point seven four. I'll need in my bank account ninety five thousand six hundred and sixty five and seventy five cents. So I'll need ninety. 5,665,75 cents. That's how much money I must have in my bank account. In other words, if I were to save monthly, earning 8% interest per month, uh, per year annum, compounded monthly, my future value, so this will be the future value of my annuity. How many payments will I have made? In three years, 12 payments per year means I'll have made 36 payments. So my future value of the 36 payments must be 95,665,75. So let's go and put that into our formula.
So we've seen our formula, the future value of an annuity of N payments. Here's my payment. And in a bracket, 1 plus my, please remember, this I is not my yearly interest. It depends on whether I'm paying monthly or yearly or quarterly. The power of N. N, remember, is not here. It's the number of payments I made divided by I. <coughs> and in this we already know our value is 95665,75 is equal to x is unknown. We don't know what our monthly payment is. We know our monthly interest though is our yearly interest is 8%. So we must divide that by 12 as well as by 100. So I'm just going to divide by 1200. Okay. N is the number of payments. I make 36 payments if I make a payment once a month for three years. Minus starting in one month's time. If I started immediately, I would have made 37 payments. But I'm starting in one month's time. I didn't mention that. Okay, and then I divide by 8 over 1,200. Okay, now we simply need to solve for X. So we multiply both sides with 8 over 1,200 and we divide both sides with this whole bracket. Divide with 1 plus 8 over 1, 2, double 0 to the power of 36 minus 1. And on the other side, 1 plus 8 over 1, 2, double 0 to the power of 56 minus 1. Here we go. On this side, of course, all of this cancel to leave me with x. And my final answer being x is equal to, and we'll have to use our calculator again. Okay, there's our value already, still in the calculator, times 8 divided by 1200. Okay. And that answer must be divided by the bracket, two brackets actually, 1 plus 8 over 1200, that is the bracket, to the power of 36, minus 1, and we close the last bracket, and we get an answer of 2,360 rand and 5 cents. 2,360 rand and 5 cents. And there we go. If that is the amount, I start saving. I buy a new con now and I want to replace it in three years time with these conditions. If these were the conditions, I will have to start in one month and every month thereafter invest 2,360 rand and I'll be able to afford a brand new car. Uh, I just want to show you or stress the fact that this would be an uh, a much, much lower amount than if you were to, in three years' time, decide to sell your old car and get a loan for the deficit. In other words, instead of make, having a sinking fund, you take a loan to pay for the rest. So it is a very, very good business principle to have sinking funds to replace expensive equipment or assets. Well, there's more than enough examples. You go and try a few.